In the world of free ride and freestyle, he comes with many monikers, but all of them seem to end with world champion. He's three-time IFWA world champion, two-time Thai Cup world champion, and one-time IJSBA world champion in freestyle. I want to introduce to you a gentleman 30 years old out of Fullerton, California, right in the middle of a space that was a far cry from Jet Ski's hub in the early 90s. But it didn't take long for California to catch up. They became a magnet for jet skiing. And interestingly enough, a new way for surfer soul to be expressed by blending surf and jet skis. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Gomez, great to have you here today. Thank you, Don. It's great to be here. So let's get started. I want to talk a little bit first. Um, I want to roll this clip from Jet Dreams, and then let's talk about what got you started on this path. Okay, so here are these crazy guys goofing around on the ocean, and you're approximately how old, munchkin size? Oh, many munchkin. I was six years old um, in diapers, just uh, this is a 1990s movie. I'm a 90s baby, and um, that's Scott Watkins, uh, Harry Gocher, Chris Flynn, Pichetti, and um, and Larry Ripper Kroger, of course. And this was this is the movie that was near and dear to my heart. Um, VHS movie that had uh, the best in the business, uh, op, you know, throwing down on 550s, and it was just a cool radical film that I was able to just digest as a kid. That my dad had a 550 and his friends and they were really into in writing and it was just really great to be able to like see something that was just so iconic at the time and like see freestyle and it was just it was just a rock star show of a video so walk me through how you got started in the sport you've been watching this you knew this was something you were in love with but how did you get introduced into jet skiing and free ride and freestyle um well at an early age i was introduced to jet skis because again my dad had one and then we were always going to family lake trips and whatnot and when i got fast forward into high school a friend of mine worked on that jet ski that my brother had taken uh, possession of uh and then my middle brother philip and i actually worked on it together um got it going we took it out uh to a lake and um a friend of ours looked at us and they're like hey you know you guys look, look like you know what you're doing why don't you come try oceanside and took my brother and I out to Oceanside, and that was it. The hook was just set, and uh, man, I was just dreaming and etching to go out because uh, all you do when you're at a lake is you go and you. We were looking for wakes to go jump boats and just travel. So in the ocean, there's no shortage of that. It's just epic. And went to work at a jet ski shop, which was basically the first three years of my existence in jet skiing in high school. I was just all the money I was making was paying for gas to get there and jet ski parts that I, that's all I was working for. <laughs> oh man, that's insane. So, um, we have two different disciplines to talk about. I'm going to start with free ride. That seemed to be mm -hmm. a lot of where your roots are. First thing I want to roll here is a clip that we have from GoPro motor surf. I want to take a look at this really quick and uh, talk a little bit about some of the tricks and also motor surf racing as well. And can you walk me through while we're doing this? What's it like getting ready for a competition? Like, what do you have to do to get ready for this? Oh, wow. Uh, competition for free ride. I mean, um, it's, I'd say it's honestly more intense than freestyle per se. And I know we'll touch on that later because uh, there's just so much going on in the ocean. Um, first of all, like, it's really like, this is this is a bad boy sport you got to be willing to get out there navigate be a good I, honestly i think the all-around best jet ski riders have roots in surf riding um and it's just by by proven by legends that we know in the sport chris mcluggage um is one of the shining examples i mean the guy knows how to surf ride same with dustin um Montsuris. uh these guys kind of have some surf riding background now, being able to handle a ski, handle it fast in dynamic conditions, you have to understand, kind of be a surfer, like Taylor Curtis, prime example, amazing surf rider, grew up all his life around the surf, can sail, navigate. Um, you've got to have your wits around you because free riding is a, is a, it's a chess game, in my opinion. If you're really into it and you're really into the, uh, I've, I've tried to help a lot of riders over time understand the sport and understand 
the primary goal of judging and it's really trying to be a well-rounded writer it's hard to express explain because people see all the jumps and that's like the flashy sexy bit of free riding but the surf riding aspect of it and combining the two it's a chess game also your opponent how to cut there's a little bit of game playing in there where you know do you want to you're gauging off of that guy too is he gonna be watching you and trying to out jump you and you try to like pep him up to jump and then out out surf ride him while he's off you get them all pumped on jumping because you're just trying to one-up each other it it's just the most fun um the biggest thing is just being open-minded it took a really long time it took 10 years to finally win a world title in it but um i would say based on what people have said it's just kind of nice to have a style of my own that's really flourished and i can give personally full credit now looking at that and what people say credit to those all those guys that really i just admired a ton and just pulled uh bits of their writing that and that was just by being open-minded. I really want to see this sport grow. I'm going to play this Huntington Beach free ride clip as we talk a little bit more. Um, this water, not quite as crazy, I think, at least parts of it, as we saw in some of the motor, motor sport or mm-hmm. motor surf. But let's talk a little bit about being able to read water as we watch this clip. Um, Absolutely. When you're out there, this is a competition where you have two riders in free ride. They're going to go head to head. But you're really, you're really fighting for, I guess it's not fighting because it's surf. You're really syncing up with the water. Describe how you read this and how you ride these incredible tricks. Yeah, so, I mean, again, surf riding contests, you've got inside set, which in the, on our terms is the inside toward closer to the beach, uh, where the waves are most consistently breaking, you would say, in most cases, because there's, there's a back set, um, which could look bigger, but maybe depending on the way they... It probably looks like a big mound, but it's not actually peaking. So you can go out and start to surf ride that if it starts to throw a shoulder. Um, or you can jump it, but depending on the shape is what kind of a jump you're going to get. Um, so again, the whole game is what kind of action you want to play. You want to play the inside set, play it safe, where you know the waves are breaking and the waves are only so small. Um for example, here at Huntington Beach, we had more of, honestly, we had way more of an in, exciting inside. We had a back set, but it was really lumpy. So uh, I remember Brandon in these heats, when we were in a final together, he was just going for it and sending super big right there in the video there. Um, but he was traveling big distances and it didn't always work out. I tried to be a little more technical and clean, so I found myself in the middle. Um wasn't getting as explosive amplitude but i was trying to land everything stomp it clean get my variations in so it's again it's a chess game it's 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 how you you have to kind of use personal discernment of how you feel your strengths are uh when you're writing um to have a really smooth technical run those judges have a difficult job because there's a panel of four judges that are watching you um that are watching both riders and they're doing their best with two spotters um, and the calling tricks for who's doing what at the time. And they have to just be looking, taking a note, looking, taking a note, looking, taking a note. So, um, but honestly, every judge sport has nothing's entirely perfect. And we are a very grassroots movement and trying to pull people that are credible, trying to pull guys that have have writing experience that have been in those shoes, um, best case, and also at least have strengths within those sports to uh, dictate what specific trick we're doing out there. Uh, being aggressive with your riding and, and really standing out is key, I believe, in this sport. Let's take a look at the Japan IFWA final in 2017. Walk me through what it's like to travel around the world and then also have to compete at this level. Oh, man, this is this event was just so much fun. I mean, this was a capital year for me because I had ended up winning um, – the both, I mean, couldn't have done a better year. I won both world titles, and this was I had won a freestyle contest, a freestyle world title, and then I was coming to finish the season here in Japan. Um, and yeah, I mean, putting your jet ski in a crate, getting over there, getting on it, you're so eager and excited, and it is really damn cool to like to have your competition jet ski that I go out and or test in Oceanside and like practice at home and been riding at home for years and then like you look around you're like i'm doing what i'm doing but i'm in another country that is so radical i mean you're dealing with you know language barriers you're trying to people are helping you the best they can we're just out there jamming the throttle and just rip tearing up the surf so 
uh, just so much fun to get out there and uh, have your own ski at in international waters. It's incredible. It is also an incredible pain in the ass dealing with um, international logistics. There's a process that you can do that makes it a little bit more straightforward, but it is got to be ready to spend some money. Oh, I can imagine just on a just on an average, what does it cost to put together a free ride boat? Uh, I mean, look, you can start with a Yamaha Superjet. That's what we all started with. So you go, um, I would say, getting started for a good surf ride setup in a, in a Superjet um, with a little bit more of a modern ski with all the bells and whistles that just get you out in the surf having a good time. You're anywhere between five grand and maybe eight grand. And I mean, we're now at the competition level. We've got aftermarket skis that are upwards of um, 24, 26, $32,000 brand new. The Richter Edge I Ride is just so unbelievably different than a super jet. Uh, it's got incredible strengths um, th- to do things that I never even thought I could do in the surf. And uh, like with power aggressive surf riding, it is so much fun. And it still is my favorite thing to do in the world. It looks like we've got a, a clip here for the Richter Edge debut in 2014. The boat, of course, that Rick Roy put together, a gentleman that's been a uh, forerunner in a lot of the design yep. on free ride and freestyle, um, and actually a gentleman that worked both. But I want to talk a little bit about uh, this clip as well. And then let's start drifting into the idea behind the difference between free ride and freestyle. So we'll run this clip for you too. We're actually at a close course race. So uh, you have a tendency I've noticed to multitask quite a bit at these races. Uh, this is a motor surf race you're watching Marquette. This, this was at Surf Slam, uh, I believe 2015. This was just a really exciting year because I just got some momentum with Richter. It was like my second year being a part of the team. And they're on. they just released this new Richter Edge. Um, so I was one of the first to get it. Uh, we assembled it and I debuted it there at Surf Slam. Um, and we had a lot of fun. I was able to actually pull off that victory there and Rick was stoked, I was stoked. It really showed the versatility of the boat and how well it can handle. Um, just really good feelings and vibes all around. So two things of note uh, for you as a competitor. You're one of the few competitors, actually the only one that I've seen uh, in a closed course race, pull off a barrel roll and actually do that, making a pass. And I believe that was at Surf Slam. Uh, yeah. And then you are also one of the few individuals, I think you're also the only individual in 2018, you managed to take both of the world titles. This is a picture of you at the Thai Cup in uh, Thailand, but this is also the same year that you won the IJSBA World Finals as well, correct? Yeah, this is 2018 uh, specifically. This is the year after. Um, that was a whole nother uh, battle again. But yeah, then 2017, that was um, both world titles. So again, got the uh, the freestyle world title uh, and then the free ride world title and then went to go the King's Cup and actually ended up pulling off the uh, King's Cup that year, which was just, I mean, triple, that was, again, all time, all time uh, victory that year. And that was such an amazing feeling. Talking about, uh, this is actually moving into freestyle, right? So the Thai Cup okay, and the yep. IGSBA World Finals is really all about freestyle. So we've been having you uh, discuss this idea of working in the surf and the ability to express your soul, I think, in so many ways. But freestyle, a whole new ball game. It's only two minutes, uh, typically, that you're yep. dealing with in these routines. And it is much more technical and a lot more I think you can probably uh, say more to this, but it is a lot more intense. Here is a clip of uh, the Thailand Kings Cup final run. Let's talk a little bit about freestyle as the guys get to watch this. Yeah, so freestyle is a two minute routine. We're riding extremely, unlike free ride, where we're riding relatively heavy, well handling watercraft that are built super rock solid and tough with linear power bands for the surf to be um, both surf riding friendly and jump friendly. Now we're on these little nasty little rocket ships. They're shorter carbon fiber skis with 1200 cc engines and pro freestyle. And this is, we make our own setup wake, which is about yay big, maybe a touch bigger. And it's all about body weight timing, engine power, weight distribution. And now we're trying to do free ride aerials per se um, in just combo back to back right here. I mean, this is again at the Thailand Kings Cup last year with an incredible heat that I had to pull off um, against Taiji Yamamoto. 
uh, who was just, he went out and did a double backflip and just blew everyone's mind. Um, and I was just up against the wall and I had to lay down what was to be one of the most, try to make a busy, uh, well-rounded heat. Um, dealing with freestyle judging is a little, eh, it, it's pretty interesting, I would say. You kind of have to vet the judges per se and kind of see, notice through qualifying in your initial heats on where you kind of see their score going based on what you did in your routine versus what others did in the routine and where you see the value because it could shift anywhere mostly from trick count to uh, difficulty or impression in person, or sorry, impression of that difficulty um, of that trick or whatnot. Um, and you have to keep that in mind and take that into your final um, if you're perceptive, like I try to be, because when you're at a contest, you're halfway across the world, you spend a lot of money from either yourself or your sponsors, you kind of want to have the best advantage you can. Um, so this was a prime example of, you know, two minute routine, it's exhausting, you're trying to do, again, trick counts, amplitude, variations, and for me, my biggest excitement with coming in the freestyle is, you know, the fun, they're really, really fun jet skis to ride. Uh, it's even more fun for me is the challenge. I'm addicted to just a, uh, to the challenge of any new sport or uh, especially free, uh, freestyle because I was able to actually come in with a interesting background with free ride and actually brought an evolution of free ride tricks to flat water, which was exciting because no one was really doing this. So I felt like I got to kind of shake up the environment a little bit. But, I mean, I'm going up against the – these guys, they're well established in this industry. I mean, Lee Stone's a heavy, absolute heavy hitter. He's the world champion right now. He's um, the kid's just his whole life has been bred to freestyle specifically. Um, the Japanese are insanely dedicated. Uh, there's a handful more guys that are just extremely talented. So uh, I kind of took a sidestep and tried to hang with these guys, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. You know, like I, I get a. I come out on top every here and there, but man, it's, it's uh kudos to these guys. Cause it is a whole different craft where you are, you have to be a well-rounded athlete, but your equipment in freestyle is just, you cannot argue. It is the, it is like 70% of this sport. I've been going toward the, on the freestyle route pretty, pretty hard and aggressive because that's kind of where we had some more momentum. Real quick, just a couple of quick questions before we move back to some more free ride, because I know that uh, definitely your heart is all about the free ride. In the freestyle, um, where do you get more nervous? Do you think you're more nervous? Is it more intense in freestyle or free ride? That was my first question. Mm, that's interesting. You know, I think uh, just the competitive nature in me, I get more nervous for both, but definitely free ride because of the... Uh, the anxiety that there's just so much more going on. Um, freestyle, you know, you just, you got two minutes. You <laughs> just got to go out there and kind of have your game plan. Um, and a lot of it too, I was just cowboying it up. Actually at King's Cup, that was the only time, like second time in my life I'd ever choreographed a routine. Um, and it kind of paid off because it just helps my scatterbrain self kind of keep track in a two minute routine where there's just a lot going on at the time. Um, but in free ride, man, I think I get the jitters the most because you just, you see the surf changing and you see your opponents doing certain things and you're like, man, what is, what is that guy next to me? It's head to head. There's nothing more. I mean, I wrestled for four years in high school and there's just nothing more like, I don't know. It's just, it's competitive sport. When you're man that head to head, man to man with another rider, it's, there's just something about that where you're not just in your own zone. You're not just out center stage doing a performance. I don't under, underestimate anybody. You had mentioned that you had transferred over tricks from, or maneuvers from free ride to freestyle. What were some of them that you transferred over that translated so well to flat water? Oh man, the, uh, the flex slip was, that one was, that one was dirty 30. Uh, Mick Anthony and uh, Mitch Young, these guys were kind of pioneered that trick out there. And I saw that the first time in free ride, and I was like, dude, that's so cool. So when I learned to do it in free ride, it became just the everyday go-to trick because you do it when you're going big. You can you basically do a straight backflip, but as you're leaving, you reach back with your um, – rip back with your elbows if you're elbowing a guy in the face right behind you, and you're hanging your, your right hand and your uh, right leg off, but you actually get 90 degrees with the ski. 
um, and your chest and the hood are facing the water. Um, and it is just an unreal feeling. And then uh, one of the newest ones I pioneered, which I know we need to discuss on, is the, uh, the Ninja Cork. Yes, I will bring that up shortly. I'm going to run this uh, Portugal free ride clip. This is a beautiful, beautiful shop. Uh, this is in Nazare. Am I saying that correct? Nazare. Oh, I did it wrong, of course. Nazare. Oh, it's all good. So this is some ridiculous surf. Um, and hopefully we'll get to see some of the tricks. If you see some, I'd love to have you identify a few of these. Oh, so yeah. Everybody can no kind of see what it is you're doing. And of course... That looks like one of your yeah. close friends, Mr. Abraham. This is this is Abraham Ho, the King of Mexico, 2018, um, or sorry, 2019 IFWA World Champ. So, um, identify some oh, of these no, tricks sorry, if you can. Yeah, so that's no handed barrel roll right there. Look back, that's Brandon Lawler, that's Madonna flip. He's kind of going rapid fire. Surf right there, I'm about to get completely munched on the inside here. This is probably the North Day on a small day. Like it was literally flat, but it's still breaking overhead right on shore. So that's just a big one foot flip. Abraham's big back flip, big back flip. Um, there'll be some, I think in this clip, there's a few. Yeah, it's just that it, it was such a fun trip to be in Nazareth because this place right there where we're riding, Abraham went this year and absolutely scored. This place breaks of nearly 100 foot waves. Um, it's and we had an opportunity to compete there for two to three years and um, Pan was amazing and just a highlight trip honestly. Man, um, of all of the tricks that we've seen throughout these different clips, which to you is thus far the most gnarliest, the hardest one to do? Mm, you know, uh, the one that's got me right now um, is still my buddy Joel Barry. He's got the Australian kid boy wonder over there he's got uh he does a ruler flip and it's a basically a kiss of death flip um where you're i do a super uh a superman backflip where i take the super flip bars out they leverage on your uh wrist we bought it the freestyle um it's in a free ride it's pretty gnarly because you're going off of a wave and that i'm like freestyle motocross that ramp is never truly consistent another australian uh that used to ride and just was an absolute in he's just insane with it brock taylor he really brought it to the limelight of doing these ruler flips where he is just absolutely hanging from the ski. Like it's almost as if he did a push up underneath it and it's just hanging. I haven't quite got there. I think that's the gnarliest. Um, would love to work my way up to that someday. Let's watch the monster energy free ride. IFWA tour stop. Club. Oh yeah. This, this is pretty This good. one's great. You're, this is great. Joel's in this one. Um, handful of guys. I mean, Abraham, I'm pretty sure in this clip, uh, this is the year. This son of a bitch did a uh, double backflip on me to beat me in the final. Um, it was so rad. I was so pumped for this guy. I mean, I, bitter, yeah, because he beat me, and I was kicking his ass. But, um, yeah, this is great. Now, Such this is fun. down in Ixtapa, Mexico, right? This is in Ixtapa, Mexico. Okay. Uh, this was an IFWA tour stop um, there, and uh, we are battling it out. That's Joel Berry. It's an um, Indian air flip. Uh, my buddy Sean Starr there. This is where we're going. Abraham and I were in our final right here. Uh, that's a scarecrow backflip. That's an early double point back. And uh, TC ripping up the surf there. Hugo from um, from Africa. Uh, Mick Anthony from Australia. Right there, Joel Berry. Abraham doing a scarecrow flip. That guy came miles and like miles in his ability. Traveling with him is just, he's like a brother to me, man. It's just He's done so well for himself and really pushed his limits. Um, so one thing I want to point out while we're getting the opportunity to watch this, these skis are, the uh, footholds are customized, right? These are all moved in the area where you need them so that you can lock your yep. feet in. Okay. Yep. So in freestyle, most of the guys, we have our, our feet back to, uh, back to back. So here's Abraham doing a uh, double back flip right here. First one done in a competition in free ride. So, yeah, that was just unreal. So, I mean, a rat bastard. <laughs> it was so cool. Um, these are some of uh, what you have identified to me, some of your heroes in the sports. And I, I don't have everybody's picture, but um, Abraham Ho, of course, we just talked about. Yep, my Mexican brother from another mother. And here is another one, Eric Malone. 
Eric Eric Malone, man. He was that guy I watched one of his videos uh, at World Finals. When I actually watched him at 2008 World Finals when I graduated high school. I watched him do it was like two or three backflips in a row, and that was insane. The one and uh, only. Joe Kenny. Yep, Joe Kenny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that guy was a legend. I only got to meet him one time, and that's my only regret in life. I wish I got to ride more with that guy. Mike Serlin. That man is rad. He uh, worked at Waterworld, and I got an opportunity to end up working with him. And so he would kick the crap out of me because I was the villain and he was the, the mariner, the hero. Um, so we got to kick the crap out of me, uh, and we got the jet ski together in scenes uh, at the, during the show. But this guy really gave me a lot of surf riding foundation. Is that uh, is that Larry? Oh, that's Larry. That's. Oh, that's we don't Larry. have Ross Champion. Oh. That's right. We don't have Ross Champion, but Ross Champion for those who are really in the free ride. I mean, the guy is just an absolute. He looks like Kelly Slater, and he's just an incredible person. Just the, honestly, the one of the best human beings I've known in and out of the water. Um, oh, welcoming me with open arms was just a professional. It was legitimately a professional athlete in jet skiing that inspired me to carry them, carry myself the way I do right now. Approach the sponsors the way I do. Try to just, just be a good person in general, and be an, uh, try to be a, style, a better athlete than you were the day before. And um, I owe that guy a hell of a lot of credit because um, he led the way for not only myself but a lot of my friends that I look up to uh, in free ride. He did, a, he did a massive amount for our sport. I know you wanted to talk about uh, just a little bit on Zach Bright and Larry Rippen Kroger too. We just had his picture yeah. up. I don't have Zach's picture, mm -hmm. but uh... no, that's fine. ZB, I mean, there, there, I wouldn't be put it this way. But the guy's got the biggest heart in free ride, and I wouldn't be where I am right now. Um, if it wasn't for him consistently kicking my ass through the years when he progressed like a missile and I was a little more calm and smooth approach, but we traveled to our first contest together and then we consistently were just going to different places together. We had semi-rival sponsors per se, but it was just a brotherhood and he, I really pulled from him. He pulled from me. We went practice together and we progressed insanely and everybody around us progressed insanely. And so uh, our friendship, I mean, he's moved on a little bit from jet skiing and he's doing some hooligan flat race, flat track racing right now. And he's still the same, this awesome character he is. He's got a beautiful family and I'm just super happy for him. So um, it's all good. It's all no love lost. Still ride with his brother, Jake, who's as crazy as ever and still rides incredibly well. So, um, And then rounding it out, of yeah. course, for... Uh, some of your heroes, Larry Rippen Kroger, who I believe got you in, and we're going to talk about that next, uh, the stunt yep. side, but uh, also props to this gentleman for the Hot Water movie as well, which you'll see next, but I know you wanted to. Absolutely. Yeah, Larry Rippen Kroger, he was in Jet Dreams, um, just the first iconic jet skier. I mean, he, he did it. He did a lot. <laughs> he did so much in the sport from commentating and just being a well-rounded guy where he was racing doing freestyle, dabbled in free ride at the time for what minimal it was, builds a stunt career for himself when jet skiing kind of started to phase out. He really followed after that dream, grabbed it by the horns. And when I got involved and he got me one of my first jobs, I mean, I talked to a lot of stunt guys and these guys are like, no, Larry is a really well-respected individual. And it takes a lot in Hollywood to work your way up to that. And it's not just jet skiing. He's driving cars, getting the crap kicked out of himself, setting himself on fire, doing stunt like gnarly stunt business and then comes back and gets to finally after what must have been nearly a decade of work on his behalf to get this dream of his called hot water um directed film shot and i got to be a part of a decent amount of the film and actually my wife and i are in the movie with credits as being ourselves and it's like from where i started to where this movie just came out now um, this is so amazing. Let's transition just a little bit, right? Cause sure. you, um, have had the opportunity to be in different commercials and did different movies. I, I have to show this one with a uh, Ken Jong. This is an Adidas yeah, commercial. This is my first stunt job. Oh my gosh. Let's take a look at this. Uh, yep. Stunt doubled. He was slim Jen, slim chin. So you're Riding in all gold. <laughs> I'm in all gold. They shaved me. I look like a little nine-year-old Jewish boy at a bar mitzvah. And, uh, yeah, they got on this gold jet ski. It was Clay Collins' jet ski. And um, I just did tail stands around the pool because I couldn't on stock 550. I had no steering. That's all I could really do. And then right there at the end, that little lady pyramid, they got me up on a green screen. They had me saying all this profanity and 
weird stuff that they didn't even need me to say. They were just messing with me because I was so new to the industry. But that was my first, that was my introduction into the, in the sun industry. It was, I was beyond stoked. So I have to show this one off. Um, you've really made a name for yourself, by the way, for this backflip idea in a pool. Um, is this, now I, I can't tell if this, which one it is, but one of these you did a super flip. Is that correct? You actually did a super yeah, flip? Yeah, this, this, this one, I actually did it before and it went viral, which kind of inspired this video. Um, so this company, uh, Crep Protect, they're based out of England. Um, they're a waterproofing, you know, they have a waterproofing um, uh, aerosol for your shoes. And the, the shoe thing is insane. You know, these guys wait on, uh, out and they fight over these brand new edition sneakers that come out at uh, Nike. It's a whole nother deal. Um, so they came, they got these two of these $800 pair of like Kanye West Yeezy Wave Runner shoes. And the whole spoof was it just, they literally got them, they got them in an airplane. I produced this. I got my buddy Reed's house all dialed in. He let us come there. And yeah, I put the shoes on. They're like, this is what we want. We want you to do a flip. And I was like, well, we're debuting shoes. So let's do a super flip. So we put the video, you know, we shot this a few times. It was incredibly difficult because unlike my viral videos, I got to just hone in the jump a few times. This time they were shooting in that ultra slow-mo. So I had to go jump, try the super flip. I wasn't really comfortable with a lot of the jumps, but when I landed it, I had to then pull the ski out of the water because it can't sit in the water the way it is. Um, and we had to wait for the camera to render. Just like they, they produced it incredibly well. Yeah, that's it's beautiful footage. I'm just insane watching you do that in a tiny pool. This, um, this kind of goes a little bit back to your roots. This is one of the pool party backyard flip clips that uh, I wanted to share yeah. with everybody. This is really this in the dinosaur, which is <laughs> stay tuned my buddy eric um it was his birthday party and like housewarming party he just built this pool and he's like messages me on instagram he's like hey dude do you mind can i hire you to like come flip in my pool and i was like well yeah let's work it out i'm always open to a job and yeah it was a whole nine we did this sheriff showed up because they had live band playing neighbors were all like complaining about the noise so and then the, the sheriffs were all stoked when they saw it they just had to respond and uh, I ended up ripping a flip right in front of them, and they were stoked. Everyone was so was so stoked, and the the video went just completely viral. Yeah, and then this uh, T Rex one coming out that was previously done, and this was my I would say my first viral video that really took off. When I just thought, hey, what the hell? I know how to, I have this backflip ski. Let me wear this T Rex costume because I saw guys doing trampoline stuff and. It was just the most ridiculous thing, and my friend uh, Liquid Militia produced it. My buddy Guillermo filmed it, and man, it went insanely viral. Um, got picked up on um, the Inside Edition and a couple of other uh, channels. And then fast forwarding to, ironically enough, I travel the world. I do all the competitions that I've ever dreamed of doing, win world titles and accolades. The one thing that was in front of my being in front of my house with my brother's jet ski that I've had since the beginning was the video and the experience that went the most viral in the world. And that's this <laughs> um, thing. Oh my that's goodness. That's this right here, riding up the street, which is something my brother and I always wanted to do every time our street floods in a heavy rain. And so we finally, the stars aligned and we just made it happen. And he hopped in the back of a pickup truck with my mom. You can hear him screaming bloody murder as I'm going like a salmon upstream. I'm in, an inch of water on the left side of my ski and maybe three inches of water on the right hand side just skimming above the surface just grinding the bottom of my hull when i got towards the end and uh this is pretty rad yeah that, this experience i mean it was right right when california was coming out of a drought and uh it just got picked up on worldwide like went eight eight crap viral like everywhere that has got to be one of my that that and the t-rex are definitely one of my favorites all right, I have always wanted to do this with you. I wanna take a moment and actually break down a trick. Um, okay. And I thought it would be appropriate to do one that you um, invented. You I, you were telling me earlier that you actually took the idea um, off another gentleman that you think very highly of. And I wanna talk about how you built the Ninja Cork. So we're gonna start here. This is the first picture of it, but walk me through the process yeah. of how you create these tricks. Absolutely. So the Ninja Cork stemmed from a uh, super roll, which um, Joel Berry brought out to the surf, which was really gnarly. That is taking off from the water uh, to break it down. 
we're taking off, we're accelerating out. I've got the handle pull locked down with my super flip bar. I have one lever out actually, because that's the only one I'm leveraging off of. And I take off, I'm over the front of the ski. My arm comes out first to break away and the legs are pushing off the ski as I accelerate. That way I can get over the front of the ski, which is actually the pivot point of the rotation. And you just have to follow through with your hips and get the right motion right. If you're off in the beginning, you're getting whipped off the ski and it can end up really bad. And um, thankfully, I was able to dial it in. And it's so far been a trick that um, some guys are coming along now and starting to do the no-footed roll. And that's really awesome. But I've still kind of been the only one that's holding the, uh, you know, having one hand attached. That is spectacular. Thanks for walking me through that. And I loved the opportunity to talk about the anatomy, if you will, sure. of a trick, because I know you guys put so much into it. Um, I want to touch just super briefly on this jet surf. This is fairly new. I know you've been playing on uh, yep. the jet surf board for a bit, but you actually went into competition this year. Uh, your first competition was a third place, but let's just roll this clip. Now, where is this at, this first race that you went to? Uh, so this was in Florida. Uh, I went out to Orlando at um, at our friends. Uh, they have a compound there that they actually do um, jet surf. Uh, like it's a, it's a jet surf academy in Orlando. But I've been with the jet surf community for about three years now because I was the first one in the world to do to do a backflip and ride away from it. Um, I did it in the surf at Daytona, and then we did some other things. They got me aboard. Now I'm becoming an ambassador with them. I'll go ahead and play that Puerto Rico uh, clip as we start chatting about some of the next steps for you and where you think you want to be the next five years. Um, but here's some yeah. of the action of you down in Puerto Rico aboard the... Uh... Yeah, and, and this is where the board, honestly, is like, I really enjoy riding it the most. Um, so it's a, and just for those who are watching this, wondering what the hell is this? This is a, uh, they're made in the Czech Republic. It's a very small personalized board, it weighs about 50 pounds. So you're able to travel with this in a bag Take it with you on an airplane like I did here to Puerto Rico. It's a 100cc two-stroke fuel-injected uh, motorized surfboard. So fast forwarding to 2019, you had sort of a big event happen after uh, all the world titles. Tell me about this beautiful lady. Uh, this is my wife, Kaylee McNay. She's um, well, Kaylee McNay Gomez um, now. And uh We've been together, um, we had three years going on. She traveled the world with me, did the world tours. I supported her when she went after her, uh, she went after a wakeboarding uh, master's class um, world title. Uh, she ended up getting second, so that was really exciting. We did that within our first year, and we just really, it was like a vacation. Some people say, oh, you're living like a vacation life. It was so damn hard because we were just, we had the best and the worst of each other. She came with me to Ixtapa. We backflipped on a jet ski together. We've done flat water backflips together. Right here, we're about to do a flat water and a backflip together. Um, she's she's just she's crazy like me, and we both were little water babies, and we really enjoy just all aspects of just being out in the water and having fun. And she's um, my perfect life companion and my best friend. And um, I get I found I found I'm very fortunate to find a friend um, and a soulmate to um, join my life with. We get married the week after World Finals this year at the Nautical Beach where the World Finals used to take place right there in the Cove. And I was fortunate enough to have you uh, and Mike Young, uh, Dave Arnold, actually announce us as we entered our um, uh, for our ceremony. Yeah, that for was... For reception, I should say. Yeah, that was a... Um... That was an incredible moment, and it was literally a lineup of who's who in the industry. So I think a big acknowledgement to um, some of your friends. Very impressive group, and we are in crazy lucky to have you be involved in this, uh, to be involved in this sport. I want to take a moment. Um, I don't think a lot of people have a chance. You are just such an open person. But I don't think a lot of people have a chance to kind of have fun and find out some interesting, crazy trivia. So we had asked uh, if you had a moment to ask a quick question of Mark Gomez, what questions would you ask? And there were some crazy ones. We pulled the craziest ones oh we boy. could find. And uh, we've got a speed round for you, which I thought was kind of appropriate considering the fact that you are such a competitor. Are you ready? 
Oh, I don't know. I don't do good on the spot. Let's give it a go. Oh, you're going to love this. What's on your playlist? Name three or four songs. Uh, the violence from Alex, uh, asking Alexandria, um, Van Halen. Um, I don't know the song, but I just know the jam, but, um, what else? Um, Oh gosh, what is it? That's my time. You got me. I can't think of the other one. We have to pass. No problem. Favorite ride spot? Oceanside. Favorite. Always and forever will be. Always Oceanside. All right. Fave shoes. Favorite shoes? Vans. Boxers, yeah. brief, or commando when you ride? I wrestled in high school and I, it was boxers, mandatory, so it kind of carried. Right, those are my favorite part catcher. Best prank on Ho. Best prank on Abraham? Uh-huh. Oh, man, probably. Uh, God, I, I feel like uh, I might have... I, I think I messed with him quite a bit on tour. Um, I, I think shutting down the car once when we knew we had a starter problem and then we had to get out and he had to push it to get it started. I think that was pretty entertaining. Best I can't yeah. believe I landed that shit moment. <laughs> Oh my God, I have, there's so many times I should have died. Just like super flips. There's times where I have fallen out of the air and um, just didn't get my rotation back in the ski. Ultimate worst case scenario, you're falling down on top of the ski. You're holding on with your arms and you're coming in. And I've just had the super flip handlebar come and just cheek the bottom of my chin, uh, even wearing a helmet. So it's just like, it could have been like just, face crusher death but it just cheeked by so stuff like that happens in the surf and in freestyle it's just gotta wear the lid I, in my opinion it's mandatory now favorite fast food panda express freestyle or free ride free ride stranded on an island what is one thing not person thing you would bring with you besides a phone and your jet ski Oh, I was going to say, uh, besides my phone and my jet ski, and it has to be a thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. More gas for my jet ski? <laughs> I, an oil tanker. An oil tanker. I want I want the Deacon boat from Waterworld. I, I want so much damn gas and oil. Like, I don't want it to ever stop. So, sorry. You have. I there you it. go. I like it. What I talent? Win. I'm going to go on that island forever. I'm going to be jet skiing. Don't, forget, don't worry about me. <laughs> what talent do you wish you had? <laughs> um... I wish I could fly because that would save me a lot on airfare and it'd, it'd be really fun because then I could just send it and if it didn't work out. I could at least hover to the ground a little bit lighter. I don't know. It's always been kind of, it'd be a dream of mine. All right, here we go. Something about you that people would be shocked to find out. Oh man, I would be shocked to find out. I am the son of a baker, and I ate nothing but cake for most of my life, and somehow I'm not overly round and diabetic. Duly noted. Favorite competitor? Favorite competitor overall? Uh, well, it, the question just came in, fave competitor, so I'm going to let you just run with it. Favorite, com favorite competitor, Abraham Ho. Yeah. There's not, never been, we have been in heats and quarterfinals and uh, competed all over the map and he's hands down one of my favorite guys to compete with more it's writing and it's a it's a friendship so it's best heats coming from that guy kaylee's best habit kaylee's best habit um her best habit lately is uh either wake surfing uh getting me out and going wake surfing uh or making me make fresh coffee put it in the fridge lately so it can get cold so i can make her iced coffee just takes a while but it's funny because i just want coffee right now but that's kind of interesting and fun all right you know what's coming kaylee's worst habit her worst habit oh um i love my wife um i would say the worst thing she does sometimes is maybe just doesn't get we have to it's a little personal bit so our dog, when he poops, he's got a little, we call it a little jube because they're flat bottom dogs. So you got to wipe their butts or else you pick them up and they're so cute and he stamps you. And now you got poop on your shirt. So you got to be an adult and you just got to get a little wet wipe. Well, sometimes she just misses a little crumb on there. And that's just kind of an unfortunate bit. Oh, that is fantastic. Okay. Um, which scares you more? Ready? Engine failure, 
your mistake in a competition or ghosts? Oh God, I was really expecting you to say sharks, but um, <laughs> I would say uh, my mistakes. I'm terrifying. I am terrified of myself. All right. What do you have to have to start your day with? Coffee. Cup of black rifle coffee in my cup. And my final on the speed round is name your nicknames and then tell me which one's your favorite. Uh, pretty much just, it's always been my last name, Gomer, Gomez, Gomer, at Risen Wild. Reach out to them and ask them what my most ridiculous nicknames are. My worst, uh, apparently I'm the, I'm the worst nightmare because I always call them for crap. Last minute requests, stickers, shirts that they need that I need made or whatnot. So they call me the worst nightmare. Mark, thank you so much for your time today. Absolutely, Don. This was so much fun. I wish, the, I hope the best for you. If anybody wants to reach out, um, hit me up on Instagram at Mark Gomez 137. Um, follow me. I have a YouTube account, Facebook, pretty personal. Uh, just got to ask and make an attempt to try to talk to everybody at events. And if uh, you guys need any help with coaching, writing, trying to kind of help out in the field right now, COVID's a weird time, but doing everything I can to kind of give back to the community, um, support my life, support my wife, and uh, work on some jet skis and just keep enjoying the sport that we love so much. You've been watching Profiles in Freestyle. I'm Don Dawson. We'll see you next time.